Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series review. Today we're taking a look at the beautiful Regalus Ceratops. This amazing looking figure retails for $69.99 and you can order it directly from Creative Beast Studios. And if you're outside the US, Everton Dinosaur will be stocking Wave 2 very shortly and I'll leave a link to both those sites in the description of this video. So before we take a closer look at this figure, let's just go over the packaging really quick. Comes in the standard Beast of the Mesozoic style packaging we've been seeing since the Raptor series. You've got the logo done in red foil trim. Then you have some beautiful artwork on the sleeve of the Regal Aceratops. Turn the box to the side, you've got the Beast of the Mesozoic logo. Silhouette of the Triceratops. And on the back of the box, you've got the same artwork on the sleeve with some facts about Regal Aceratops. And then sliding the sleeve off, you've got the checklist for all the Wave 2 figures and just like every figure in this series. You get a nice collector card with that beautiful artwork with the same facts on the back of the card. So enough about the packaging. Let's pop this beautiful looking figure up on the turntable and take a closer look. So let's start with a 360 degree view of the Regal Aceratops. This figure is absolutely gorgeous. I love the color scheme on here. In my opinion, I think this is the best painted figure out of Waves 1 and 2 so far. The color scheme is based off the Madagascar tomato frog. Fun fact, I used to keep those frogs way back in the day and I had a male. Every time it rained, he would just croak his head off. He used to just dread when I started hearing rain outside. I knew I was in for a sleepless night. So anyways, just the colors on this thing just really pop. I just love all the reds, orange, and yellows and this that hint of black along the side of the body and just that eye stripe. Uh, along the side of the skull right there. Just everything about this paint job, I just love. It's so immaculately painted, and I just love the hand-painted look of these figures, and obviously the articulation is always great on here. You can get these figures in some fun poses, and this Regal Ceratops just looks adorable sitting down like a little puppy dog. And let's just do a couple of quick measurements. This figure is 11 inches long from the tip of the beak to the tip of that short tail, and about four and a half inches tall to the top of the frill. So Regal Ceratops is estimated to be around 16 and a half feet long. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure nicely in that 118 scale range. So let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure style with this beautiful head sculpt. I still can't get over how well the paint job came out on this figure. I just absolutely love that dark eye stripe that's highlighted by white paint. The eyes painted yellow with a black pupil has a nice gloss coat over it to give it that wet look. You got mixtures of yellow, orange, and red all over the head of this figure. The horns on the nose and brow came out really nice. You have some nice dry brushing and some nice texturing on there. Same thing with the beak. You got some more yellow dry brushing to bring out all that detail. You can see the nostrils sculpted in right there. And then opening the mouth, you can see there is a nice glossy coat of pink paint to give it that uh, wet look. The mouth in this figure does not really want to stay open in mind. It keeps kind of wanting to close a little bit. But if you could just make it out, let me try to zoom the camera in there. There is a articulated tongue, but it's pretty far back and it's kind of hard to manipulate and you're really not going to see it unless you're looking at the figure like this. But it's nice to know that it is there and the teeth in the back, you could just see it poking up right here. The teeth are painted in white and then turn the figure to the side. You can see all those horns along the frill are beautifully textured and painted. They have a nice dark wash over them, bring out all that texture and you get some black markings along the edge of the frill and just beautiful scale detail all around this figure. Just love, love the head of this thing. And you get some more knobs right here in the middle decked out and some nice weathering. And let's just zoom out going down to the neck. You can see that dark stripe highlighted by way it goes down just to about the midsection of the body. You have a mixture of yellows and orange right here. And there's like a light, light green wash uh, on the midsection of this figure that just adds a little bit more depth to the color. You got some nice yellow dry brushing over the front legs. The toe claws are painted a glossy brown color. They got the correct number of toes and turn the figure over. The underside is painted a cream color. Beautiful scale detail on there. You got some nice dry brushing to give all that scales some nice definition. Really love the scale detail on this. I love the body mold on the Regal Ceratops. Shares the same mold as the sub-adult Triceratops. And then you get some large osteoderms on the thigh right here. Some more of that nice deep red and orange mixing in. Get some nice pattern going there. And look at the figure from the top. You have a nice bright red stripe going down the whole midsection of this figure. And you've got some large scales on the spine right there. You can still see some large osteoderms uh, on the black area. 
then going down to the hind feet. You can see the toe claws are also picked out in that glossy brown paint and then going down to the really really short tail on here i think that tail is just adorable looking you got a little bit of a black stripe peeking in some more large scales that go to just about the midpoint so yeah just a really really well done paint job on here like i said this this paint job i'm just i just can't get over it. it's my favorite part about this figure i think this thing just turned out spectacular Moving on to articulation, the mouth can close almost flush. The mouth is a tiny bit loose on mine. Probably gonna like get some nail polish on the joint just to kind of tighten that up a little bit. And the mouth can open about that wide. Like I say, it just kind of wants to close slowly on its own, but that's not a big deal. I'm sure if I work at it, I can probably wear that joint out a little bit. And then going down to the back of the head, you get a little bit of side to side and a little bit of wiggle waggly. And then, yeah, that's a term. And then for the back of the neck right here, you get a nice upwards bend and you get some nice, nice downward movement. You can see that joint starts to poke up at the top right here. Kind of breaks up the uh, profile of the sculpt a little bit, but you do get some nice downward movement. And then looking at it from the front, just, uh, just still love those uh, dark stripes along the eyes. You get some really nice side to side movement with those two joints working together and then going down to the front legs they can move forwards and backwards they can splay out a little bit and you can get about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow and then at the wrist you get some rotation and a little bit of a pivot going down to the midsection of the body you can get some side to side movement just a little bit it's really tight on this figure and you can also rotate the hips up a little bit and rotate them down and then going down to the back legs back legs can move forwards and backwards and you get under 90 degrees of bend at the knee and then right here at the ankle you get a little bit of tiltage and rotation same thing with the back feet a little bit rotation and a little bit of tiltage the tail can move up down side to side and just one thing i want to point out my figure when the joints on this figure i got are really really tight I don't know if you can make it out right here in the camera, but when I bent the leg back, I got a little bit of plastic cracking right there. You can kind of make it out, so that's just something to be aware about. I just think the muscle definition on the calf muscle right here is a little bit thick, and it just pushes into that hip socket a little too hard. I kind of wish it was a little bit more of a cut right here to give the... Uh, back legs a little bit more of a bend but other than that the articulation on these figures is great and really fun to play with moving on to comparisons first up here it is one of the jurassic world human figures here it is with dennis nedry and next up here it is with another regal aceratops figure here it is with safari limited versions and doug watson is a master of sculpting ceratopsians and these two look really nice next to each other you can almost consider the safari one to be a juvenile if you want to display these two figures together and next up here it is with the mattel jurassic world always too small triceratops and next up here it is with the gr toys spinosaurus and you can imagine someday if david decides to do you know, 118 scale spinal sort of figure. That thing is going to be banana lands. And here's your obligatory PNSO Tyrannosaurus Rex comparison. And next up here it is with the subadult Triceratops. Now these two figures share the same exact body mold. And these two are the only two that share this body mold in the entire series. And I really like this body type. It's like, it's a little shorter and stockier than the other mid-sized figures i just think the scale detail and just like the bulkiness is a little bit superior than the other figures in the size range in the series and i just hope in the future when david decides if he decides to do more species of ceratops that he will definitely be using this mold a little bit more often and speaking of that other body mold here it is with the wendy ceratops so these two body types represent the figures in that $70 price range. You can clearly see the differences. Like I said, the body type on the Regal Ceratops and Triceratops is a lot more stockier and shorter. You can see this figure is a lot longer, a little bit sleeker. They still weigh about the same, but I do like this body mold a little bit better than this one. Even though only three figures in the series share this body mold, the Wendy Ceratops, Thyracosaurus, and Medusa Ceratops. And lastly, let's compare it to one of the big boys. Here it is with the adult Centrosaurus, you can see, you know, what $25 does in this line, how much bigger the figures get, and they're going to get even bigger in Wave 3. 
So final thoughts on this Regal of Ceratops. I absolutely love this figure, just like I love every figure in this series. But the paint scheme on this one is truly a step above the rest of the series so far. It just came out so perfect and so beautiful. Just love the use of colors on there. And I'm a huge fan of Tomato Frogs, so I might be a little bit biased towards this figure. But seriously, if you don't own any of these figures yet, definitely do yourself a favor and get at least one. You will not be disappointed. These things are an absolute blast to play around with. And like I said to begin the review, you can order this figure directly from Creative Beast Studios, or if you're outside the U.S., Everything Dinosaur will be stocking these shortly. Link to both those sites are in the description of this video. So that would do it for the review. I only have two more figures from Wave 2 to review, the Avaceratops and the Spiclifilus, and I got a few more collecting figures I got to work on because some new PNS was coming in. So yeah, a lot of new stuff coming up in the next month, so be on the lookout for those videos. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.